Alright, good morning astronomy class. I hope you guys are doing well this morning. Um, we are going to pick up where we left off with our notes last time. Uh, last time we finished Roman numerals 1 and 2, just a basic introduction into this chapter, deep sky objects. Uh, and then we spent the uh, second half looking at the uh, star clusters. Sorry, I had to stop and think for a minute what I had taught in the, prior, in the previous video. Uh, today we are going to pick up with uh, nebulae, or nebula, as some people will pronounce it. Um, hopefully uh, this background color is better for you guys. I made it a little bit lighter, so hopefully you don't have to squint and try to figure out uh, what is on the slide as much. Um, again, keep up with your notes. Uh, I am going to be checking those for a quiz grade, so you need to make sure that you stay on top of those uh, as you go throughout these videos. So this video is going to cover all of Roman numeral three for this uh, for the class notes. It is a little bit longer, so uh, it's actually about two days worth of notes, um, maybe even closer to three, just depending. So keep that in mind as we go throughout this video. So nebula or nebulae, uh, nova or novae, as it can be pronounced. It has the e on the end there. Uh, but nova occur when a pair of stars flare up to many times their natural brightness. Now, this flare up doesn't harm the stars. Now, you're dealing with a pair of stars, so you're dealing with two stars that have flared up at this point in time. Uh, they are all formed from closely located binary stars. Okay, we uh, talked about binary stars when we talked about our uh, last chapter, when the whole chapter was about stars. So, a nova is formed when two uh, closed binary stars flare up. Uh, basically, they're feeding off of each other's energy. Uh, these fade over the period of several weeks or months. Now, a nova is not something that lasts forever. Uh, it flares up for a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, and then the stars go back down to their original energy position. That flare up is gone. Uh, types. You have uh, four types here. Uh, number one, or letter A in your notes, is classical. It's the most common type. These are the ones that do exactly what they're supposed to do according to a textbook. They flare up for a couple months, they fade, and they can flare up again throughout their lifetime. Uh, a helium nova. This is believed to be caused by the explosion of a helium shell on a white dwarf star. So a white dwarf star, actually part of it kind of, a part of it explodes and that explosion creates the nova for a temporary part of time. A recurrent nova, these are objects that have uh, been seen to experience multiple nova eruptions. Uh, this multiple er eruption, it can happen maybe back to back. There are several of these explosions all at once. Uh, sorry, not explosions, eruptions. Novas don't explode. <laughs> um, there have been several eruptions all at once. And so the, uh, basically it's like a chain reaction. One explosion creates another eruption, creates another, creates another eruption and so on and so forth. Or it can be um, just the stars are on a pattern. They flare up every time at a certain time of the year and they're flared up for a couple weeks before they tone back down and they just flare up every year at the same time. And then you have a dwarf nova. These have a lower luminosity than classical nova do. And this is due to a lower temperature. So uh, pretty much, if you remember when we talked about stars, anything that has the name dwarf tacked onto it just means that the temperature isn't as high. Um, and the because the temperature is not as high, it's not as bright. And the supernova. Now, a supernova is different than a nova in that a supernova is actually when the explosion occurs. And I know I messed up a little bit. Sorry. I messed up a little bit <clears throat> talking about the nova, saying that it was due to an explosion. Kept messing that up and meaning to say eruption instead. But with a supernova, what happens is the stars actually explode all right, or one of the stars explode. It could be two, it could just be a single star. Um, but that explosion really is the death of the star, all right? Um, now, because it is an explosion, it disperses so much heat, so much gas, 
so much uh, star product into the universe that these can stay visible for months to years, all right? Um, the hot core of the star that is left over after a supernova is called a neutron star. And we briefly talked about neutron stars in our previous chapter. Uh, supernova are the primary source of heavy elements in the universe. They produce more energy than our sun will in its, will in its entire lifetime. So one explosion. Think about, how, think about how powerful our sun is okay, in and of itself. Um, think about how much energy it has every single day, how much energy it uses, how much gas it burns, all right? Think about all of that and then imagine a stellar explosion creating more than that for the sun's entire lifetime, all right? Uh, it's a pretty, uh, what's the word I want to use? Magnanimous. That's a fun word, huh? magnanimous number when you stop and think about it. Uh, observations of supernova. Uh, these are just a couple that we're going to look at. There have been more observations made of, of supernova in recent years, but these are just some uh, famous ones and uh, what people easily refer to when they think of a nova. Supernova. So you have RCW 86. It is the oldest recorded supernova. It was viewed by the uh, by the Chinese in 8185, and it stayed visible for eight months. The Chinese uh, took very detailed records on it, and you can go and look those up and study it if you want in your free time. And then you have the Crab Nebula, is the most famous result of a supernova. Uh, this explosion recorded in uh, 1054. Uh, and that's 1054 AD, okay? Uh, it was clearly viewed in both hemispheres during all hours of the day. It wasn't something that just had to be viewed at night. It was such a massive explosion that the energy left over from it was bright enough to be viewed during the daytime. And again, you can go back and you can look that up and you can read the uh, detailed accounts of people viewing that uh, nebula that was left over from the supernova. Supernovas occur about every 50 years in our galaxy. That would be the Milky Way galaxy. We're not just talking, we're not talking about the universe. When we say our galaxy, we're talking about the Milky Way galaxy where we are found, okay? Stellar explosions depend on the mass of a star, okay? Um, it's like if you drop an egg off of the tower versus a watermelon off of the tower, all right? Imagine the tower down the street. If you were to drop an egg off of that, yeah, it's gonna splat, it's gonna be messy. But if you drop a watermelon off of that, it's going to be a massive mess that you have to clean up. It's going to explode out much further because it has more mass. It's bigger. The larger the star is, the more explosive power it can have behind it if it happens to explode and become a supernova. Types of supernovas. Okay, type one. These result from the star accumulating matter from a nearby star, initiating a runaway nuclear reaction. So what happens is uh, the star, basically one star has more power than the other, and so it starts to pull that star into itself. It starts to pull that star's energy, that star's power into itself. And, no, oh, excuse me. This pulling of power creates a runaway nuclear chain reaction so that the reaction just starts occurring, and before you know it, you have the explosion of the star. Type 2, this is when the star runs out of nuclear fuel and collapses under its own gravity. So instead of stealing fuel to feed itself and cause an explosion, what happens with this type of supernova is it feeds off of all of its own fuel. It takes everything it can. It basically starves itself, and then when it can't control um, when it's not when it can't control, when it doesn't have anything to feed itself anymore, what it does is it implodes on itself, and that implosion will create a stellar explosion. Uh, nebula. Nebula are clouds of hydrogen and helium gases spread over a vast region of space. Uh, I would encourage you to look up pictures of Nova. Um, sorry, Nebula. Look up pictures of Nova, but. We're talking about nebula now, and I meant to say nebula. Look at pictures of nebula. They're actually very beautiful. Um, they 
the there's hues of pinks and purples and blues uh, that swirl around these stars because of the nebula. All right, this is the result of a supernova. So when a supernova explodes, right, when a star has exploded and it has spewed all of those hydrogen and helium gases, all forms of hydrogen and helium gases into the universe, what happens is it creates the nebula. They are referred to as supernova remnants. Now, if you're going to uh, have a conversation with somebody about uh, nova and supernova and nebula, uh, you probably wouldn't use the term supernova remnants when talking about nebula, but that's really what nebula are. They are supernova remnants. Uh, nebula will remain dark unless they are blocking something brighter or are close to stars. If stars are nearby, they will heat up the nebula and cause it to glow. So unless it has a source backlighting it, the nebula will not uh, be something that is lighted. And we're going to stop there for now, guys. I'll pick up with this video. I'll pick up with this portion of your notes in the next video. But make sure you're getting your notes down. I am going to take them for a quiz grade, so don't forget that. All right, have a good day.